Hello, ladies! It's us again. We're back, we're back, we're back. As always, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you for continuing to social distance and making a sacrifice for your grandparents. You guys are awesome. Last time, we were talking about baleen whales. And these whales use a hair like material called baleen to filter their prey from the water. So it's weird to think of the baleen whales as predators, but indeed they are eating other animals. Now their food chain is not going to be very complex. We would have something like a phytoplankton, and then we would have a krill, and then we would have, oh I don't know, how about a hump back? Whale. <laughs> whale. <laughs> they hump back whale. And by feeding so low on the food chain, there's lots of food. So they can grow very large to where the toothed whales can't get this big because remember that we have 90% of the energy lost from one trophic level to the next. So if you're a bottlenose dolphin, your food chain would look like this. And, of course, I misspelled this. There it is. Mackerel. Mackerel is a type of fish. So now we've lost 90% more energy. And if you're an orca, it's even worse, right? Because it's going to be... Because orcas can eat humpback whales, at least the calves, and they can eat bottlenose dolphins as well. They're called killer whales because they feed on other whales. A quick side story. They were also called the wolves of the sea, and often they were called that by whalers who would kill a whale that they were planning on selling the parts of, but the killer whales would eat the corpse before they could get it onto the boat. Okay, after that gruesome nonsense, we want to talk more about baleen whales. Baleen whales, baleen whales often have rorquals. No, not close. That's an A, not an E. Rorquals. And these, so rorquals, are grooves in the throat of the whale. They are used to make the throat expandable and contain more water. The more water 
in the mouth of the baleen whales the more food because they're not trying to pick off individual krill they're just swallowing a bunch of water with krill in it and then they're using their baleen to separate the krill and the water let's talk about a specific species of baleen whale let's talk about hump back whales and the first thing you should know is that they get get between 40 and 50 feet long these whales migrate like so many baleen whales they feed at the poles and they breed in the tropics so if you go to hawaii at the right time of the year you go scuba diving you'll hear the male humpback whales singing to the ladies basically saying you know hey ladies let's hook up i'm a really big whale let's do this oh also also in the tropics the females give birth so they give birth and then if they're so inclined they breed they carry that whale for a year and then they give birth the following year in the tropics again keep in mind why go to the poles and they don't go to both so they either go to the north pole every time or the south pole every time it's not like they go to hawaii and they just keep going south and now they're at the south pole those are two distinctive populations well you go to the poles poles in the summer because there is lots lots of food let's fix that that's silly lots of food remember that summer in the poles has between i'm estimating here 15 to 20 hours of daylight with a few days of the year where the sun never sets as a full 24 hours of daylight lots of light so increased light means increased phytoplankton remember phytoplankton from ap bio and that means increased krill or whatever other small animal that the whale is eating i promised i'd talk about how baleen whales can eat fish and there's a population of humpbacks that spend their summers in Norway. They don't go all the way to the poles, but Norway is pretty far up there, so there's a lot of sun, so there's a lot of little animals to eat. These whales make bubble nets. Well, what is a bubble net? A bubble net is formed by swimming 
in a large circle around a school of fish. In Norway, these are herring. It's a type of silvery fish. It's maybe 8 to 12 inches long. And there's thousands of them off the coast of Norway. The whales slowly tighten their circle until the herring are densely, densely bunched together. I'm guessing that's not how you spell densely. I maybe? I don't know. So maybe they're going from 30 foot circle to like a 15 or a 12 foot circle in diameter. The herring, this is why it works, are afraid to cross the bubble. So as these guys continuously blow bubbles, the herring are freaked out because they know they're being pushed together. They're not dumb, but they know if they cross the bubbles, they'll be outside the school and then a predator can get them. The problem is a predator's going to probably get them anyways because humpback whales take turns swimming up the center of the bubble net. And of course, they do that with their mouth wide open. They take in a bunch of water. A lot of that water has herring in it. They use their baleen to separate the water and the herring. And then they scrape the baleen with their tongue and swallow the herring live. Okay, we're going to talk about one other baleen whale. How could we not? We're going to talk about the blue whale. It is the largest animal that has ever lived. Yes, bigger than the dinosaurs. Maybe twice as big as a T-Rex. No, about, I'm going to say, eight times bigger than a giraffe. And even big things like the Brachiosaurus, which I think was a dinosaur, then wasn't a dinosaur, but now is a dinosaur. But regardless, all of those sauropods, we know in one form or another they lived. Those guys were close. They were maybe 70 feet long. But believe it or not, blue whales can grow up to 100 feet long. And because they're so long and because they're so big, they are very fast. They are incredibly fast. If you would like to see blue whales, this is something I never, ever, ever thought I was going to be able to do. They were these weird, exotic animals. Where was I going to see them? Well, it turns out <laughs> Long Beach. Yes, maybe starting 2007, 2008, as our climate changed some in late September, early October, there were so many copepods that you could take like a 10 minute, 15 minute boat trip from uh, the Aquarium of the Pacific into the ocean there and observe blue whales as they migrated. Where are they going? We don't know. <laughs> we don't know where they breed, probably some probably like the humpbacks some 
tropical location, but we haven't been able to spot them, and maybe that's for the better. What I can tell you is that this is winter. During the summer, they feed at the poles. And they do so for the same reason that the humpback whales do. Okay, ladies, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you guys are doing fantastic. And those of you who are still taking AP test, hopefully you're going to do uh, amazing. I'll talk to you guys next time.